Did you see that? Did the did the squirrels freeze for you guys? The squirrels froze for me. That's a bad sign. How's it going, everybody? S set your mini message. What's my mini message? Glade, what's that? It, uh, I thought I was first, but I was not first. Sir good enough, and maybe even somebody else was before me. <laughs> good job, guys. Good job. You beat me. Hey, Quindor's here. You were waiting? <laughs> Took me long enough. Jeez. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I kind of wanted to stream even earlier this morning, uh, but I slept in instead. <laughs> I did, uh, for those of you who have been waiting for your names to appear on the patron list, I've updated it again. It's the first time I updated it since like November. So I updated it. I have to update it manually. It doesn't take long, but I do have to <laughs> consciously make the effort to do it. So I apologize that I hadn't done it for a while, but I'm doing it again. Solilis. Soliasis. Thank you very much. First time, Rob. All right. From Toronto. All right. Ooh, Doom Raider. All right. Oh, hosting your stream. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you very much. Let's play this just cause. Yeah, get out of bed. I know, right? Oh, the Matrix. You know what we could talk about today? We can talk about the Matrix. Um, and we can also talk about webhooks. But that wasn't what I had planned. <laughs> huh? uh, yeah, we can totally talk about we can totally talk about the Matrix and um, my mini. Setting your mini, you mean the, you mean the, the mini matrix? You mean the, um, like a D1 mini to run that, that software like that other guy had? Oh, the webhooks. Oh, the webhooks. Oh, mini update, whatever you want here. Oh, is that what you're going to do? So is that the command you're going to use blade? You're going to use mini plans. What are those plans? <laughs> oh, sorry. J6 Bay. It's cold and wet in the UK. I'm sure there's some joke in there about how it's always cold and wet. Resubscribe for another month. Thank you, Tony Jacko. Just for funsies. I like to get a lot of these musical things going in the first beginning of the streams. Um, so what I put in the title to talk about today is RF plugs because I got them uh, just for Paul Hibbert, basically, just because I know that's what he uses. And I wanted to really you're wondering when Paul's going to join the stream. Maybe never. I asked him once if he wanted to join the stream and he said he thinks he would faint or something. I doubt, I'm sure he would do great. Um, it's probably more of just a timing. But anyways, uh, I, I finally, I got these uh, remote thing uh, out finally, the, the RF plugs that he uses or something similar. And I wanted to see how well they work with the uh, Broadlink RM Pro and they work great. And I actually, at the same time, was playing around with a whole bunch of leak detectors. I bought five different leak detectors. I thought I bought more than that, but maybe they haven't all arrived yet. I bought a whole bunch of leak detectors from AliExpress and got them all in and set them all up and uh, can tell you about what I like and what I don't like about them, which ones I would use and which ones I wouldn't use. I actually bought them at Christmas time um, when I was playing around with the idea of a water sensor for the Christmas tree. And we can talk about that and what I think we'll, what I think I'll do for next time. RF plugs out for all oh, the sockets and feeling I'm going to feel regret. Nah, no, Nicholas, you're good. I don't know what, uh, or Vibo sockets. What are or Vibo? Is that, are they just Wi-Fi? Oh, the RF plugs. Oh, the RF plugs. <laughs> I love his little, he does his little socky. <laughs> You have RF leak detectors all over the house. Don't know if they work. It would be bad if they went off. Have you tried them, Raspy? Every once in a while, just go throw some water on the floor and see what happens. I tested all these. Blade is now hosting the stream. Who's that one viewer? Me? You? <laughs> Old Wi-Fi Chinese suckers. Man, everybody's resubscribing. Thank you very much. What's up? Saturday at work, waiting for the theater to get free. Oh, man. Why is it not reading things out loud? I fixed that. I swear I did. I fixed it. I fixed it. Did you see this video? He is slowing, slowly going to home assistant. Oh, really? Hey, guys. Uh, is he? <clears throat> I know that he had talked about it. I know that um, Reed from Smart Home Solver. Why is it? Why is my graphic not flying around? That's weird. 
boy, things are things are going crazy here. All of a sudden, there's a little bit of craziness going on with uh, a little bit of craziness going on here with OBS. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Let's see if all the Zigbee works. Oh, oh yeah, that works. Oh, the Zigbee. 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 Ruperto, you're enjoying your Hyperion? Good, man. That's I'm glad to hear it. Broken everything. I know I broke it all. Reed is all in on Home Assistant now, huh? Super Chat, continue enjoying my Hyperion. Thank you very much. It should totally be reading that out loud. I, oh, maybe it's because I don't have... No, the speaker's set right. Golly, golly, man. I'm sorry, guys. I did it. That dude has problems. He's so funny. He is a funny dude. Did you see his poll? He wrote, he put a poll that said, like, what do you want me to talk about? Do we do Zigbee or this or that or my wife? <laughs> do we need to talk, do more videos with my wife? I think that was getting second place. <laughs> uh, he's a funny dude. I'd love to hang out with him. Um, uh, well, let's talk for a minute about the things that I put in the description as the title, and then we can move on to whatever else comes up. I kind of like that plan. How do you guys like that plan? Do you like that plan? So let's talk about these RF plugs for a second. Woo! Ah. Oh. I don't think I can handle the, his reaction to Node Red. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know what his reaction to Node Red would be. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, all right, let's turn this on. Oh, that looks horrible. Let's fix that. Man, everything is so janky slow today. Da 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 da. How's everybody doing? By the way, everybody doing well? Happy days. It's twenty 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 one. Corona's over. We're all, we're all good now, right? <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Get some of this junk out of the way, like my credit card. Oh, my camera's laggy today too. What the crud though? Anyway, these are the plugs. These are the RF plugs that I know that uh, Paul uses or something like them. And I bought a pack of three and they come with a little remote control like this. So the task is to program the codes that this remote control sends to these plugs into Home Assistant. So Home Assistant can send the commands to turn these on and off. And the bridge between those is going to be the Broadlink RM Pro. This is the, this is the older Pro. This isn't the brand new number four or whatever it is, but it should be good enough. So the way this remote works, it's got an on and an off for plug number one and then an on and an off for plug number two, and an on and an off for plug number three. That's actually not really very, I guess now that I've played with it, I realize what it does. But when I first hooked them up, I was pressing buttons and things weren't working and I didn't know what was going on. What is that? It's like all weird and backwards. Whoa. Oh, it's because I had it flipped. Nope, that didn't do it. close <laughs> it's mirrored what is going on rotate 180 there you go still kind of backwards isn't it now I think we can flip it horizontal again no not center you knucklehead you guys like you know you like watching me just goof around there it is Okay, now it's working. So silly. So silly. So anyways, this remote control didn't really, it wasn't very intuitive. But the good news is, it doesn't matter, because it works. <laughs> so now, we go to Le Home Assistant. Who doesn't like Node Red? <laughs> Just turn the remote, yeah. No, I gotta do it this way, Raspy, I gotta do it this way. Um, and we got a fun thing for ask. So flick, flicks my switch. If you do that, you have to do that little tilde and then ask and then whatever you're asking. And then it will go into the question channel and we can ask, answer it in a bit. Um, okay, here we go. 
So in order to program the Broadlink RM Pro, you got to put in the Broadlink RM Pro, um, what do you want to call it? The, the integration, right? Which I believe I did already on my blue. But let's check out the integrations and make sure it's there. Yes, I did. There it is. So the Broadlink RM Pro. So you have to use the app to connect it to your network. Big deal. We've talked about this before, right? No big deal. But once the Broadlink RM Pro is connected, then in order to get it to learn the codes, you need to call a service. Now, what I would really like to do is create a button where you just press a button and it learns a new code. Am I missing that? Is that is that in there and I'm not and I don't know it? You guys can tell me if I'm missing something here. System options. See, there isn't anything here. If I click this guy, what I would love is right here for it to say, you know, a button that says learn a new code, right? And that would be spectacular. You need to print a tilde onto a piece of cardboard so you can show it instead of waving your hands. No, I like waving my hands. This is the universal symbol for tilde. <laughs> I'm actually at the point where I think that the Broadlink RM Pro is good enough to be used as your RF hub for anything. Uh, when I tried getting it to learn these, I tried getting it to learn several different um, RF uh, codes from these different um, leak detectors, and it learned them all. It learned them all very easily. Uh, so I'm actually pretty happy with it. I, I would, I'd have to continue to test it out and see if there's some devices, some RF devices that it won't learn. But I think it's a, I think it will work. You're breakdancing. That's not showing the tilde. No, this is woo, woo tilde. <laughs> choo choo hype train, hype train, hype semi, the hype semi truck. Did I ever try the Bond? You know what, Keith? I never did. I, I asked the Bond guys to send me one, and uh, they just didn't, I guess. Or I don't remember where we left off with that. I thought they were going to send me one, and then they didn't. If they did, I lost it. I actually do have, I do have some other kind of a Tuya hub like that that I should check out, though. But why bother? This works pretty well. But here's what you got to do to get it to learn the codes, okay? Until we make a button for it. You got to go to the services tab in the developer tools and put in the service remote learn command. And then for the entity, you have to pick which remote. Now I have this remote for the Roku Ultra as well. I didn't know you could learn some of those commands. I don't think you need to. But anyways, it's just because it's called a remote entity. This is the one we care about, the RM Pro remote. Okay. So they're calling the actual little box, the hub, a remote. Okay, that's fine. Now, there are some required things you got to put in here, in here in the service data. First, you got to put in uh, the device ID to learn the command from. Now, this, you get to choose what this is. So for this case, I'm putting it, I'm calling it the, gosh, I don't remember what I called it, eTech or something. We're going to just call it the RF plug, RF plugs remote. I, I will call it, yeah, RF plugs remote. That's good enough for me. So this is just a generic name that I'm giving it. And I'll need that, I think, when I call the service to tell it to transmit the code. Okay. All right. So then the command, this is uh, what that button does on that remote right now. So right now, if you're looking at this thing, what we're going to learn is the on for plug number two. So there's plug number two. This is the on button for plug number two. So that's the one I'm going to learn. Okay. What do I mean by learn a new code? Howard, I'm having, I'm telling um, Home Assistant through the Broadlink RM Pro how to learn an RF code off of a remote control. So when I press this button, it sends an RF code that turns on one of these plugs. What I want is for the for the Home Assistant Broadlink integration to learn that code so that the Broadlink bridge can send that code without me touching this remote. 
So I can put in a, a, I can press a button in Home Assistant or as part of an automation in Home Assistant, the Broadlink RM Pro can send that code to the plug and I don't have to have the remote control to do it. So when it's learning a code, it's, I'm basically telling Home Assistant to remember the code that this button sends. Does that make sense? Does that help? RF is so unreliable. Other than TVs, I have completely removed them from my house. Really, Stone Obscurity? I I I still use it. I use it pretty pretty much. I um I find it to be reasonably reliable. I can tell you, I find it to be no less reliable than Zigbee. That's me. I don't know what all you're using it for. I'm using it for motion detector and door and window sensors generally. For the worm. No, this is the tilde. What is wrong? <laughs> the U.S. sockets always look surprised. You know what's funny? An electrician, a real electrician would tell you that this is not the way you're supposed to put them in. It's this. So the label should actually be the other way around. It should be upside down. So good enough uses it uses RF for critical things. Just send the code twice. There you go. There you go. Anyway, uh, I'm doing it because Paul's a good dude. <laughs> Spent today's challenges for you: rolling codes for garage doors. Uh oh. By Bridge, if you can figure that one out. Nope. Sorry, Tony. <laughs> good. Good luck. <laughs>All right. Well, back to this. Haven't been able to find RF motion sensors, really. Oh, John, uh, Sonoff has RF motion sensors. Sonoff has uh, RF motion sensors. That's what I'm using. I use two of them. And I tell you what, they, they've been running for two years on the same set of batteries. Oh, they even have, oh, these are Zigbee's. This is the ones I have. These are kind of big. They're kind of monstrous. So you got to put them in a place where you don't have to look at them, but they're, they're big. And this is, this is probably an accurate size. You know, they're about as big as a cell phone. In fact, they might be bigger than a cell phone. They're pretty, pretty much large, pretty large. There you go. That shows how big they are compared to a finger. They're big, nothing small about them. Um, but they work, they run on like a couple of AA batteries and the ones that I have have been working forever. And they've been very, very reliable. I have one in the boys' bathroom that turns on the lights when you go in and uh, sets the door to lock. And a one in the garage that turns the lights on in there. So they work. They work great. Link, 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 link. I wonder if I have it in my... Uh, I probably do. I wonder if I have it in this list. And then we'll get back to what we were talking about. This isn't really a, too much of a distraction, right? It's not too bad. Uh, so let's look for PI, PIR. 312, 312. Nope. How about motion? Sonoff motion detector. Here you go. Oh, this might need uh, to be changed to HTTPS. To get to the website, I don't know for sure, but there you go. So that should, I don't know if that'll work or if this will work, whatever. That should link you to that stuff. Printing stuff, see another Twitch channel live. Oh. Thanks, Pierre. So anyways, yeah, these, these Sonoff PIR sensors are pretty good. Pretty good. I like them. They work well. They cheap. They cheap, they work. So now back to this. We got to finish writing our our command here, our learn command. So the command, this is what you're going to name it. Also, this is something you choose. So in this case, because I'm going to do uh, the button, the number two button on, I'm going to use that. Okay. So is that big enough? You guys can all see. Okay. I'm afraid if I get it too big, it'll kick me out of here. But that's pretty big, right? Okay, so the command is going to be um, button, we're going to say plug, 
two, because that's the number of the plug. This remote has three, it's three different plugs that it controls. So this is plug number two on. Okay, that's the command it's gonna learn. Then you have to tell it the type of command that it is. Oh, God, man. <laughs> I was so, I was so zen. I was so zen, Blade, you rascal. Oh, man, did you need me? Or was that just, <laughs> was that just torture? That was just torture, all right. Uh, uh, can you learn a new code from home, home assistant to the plugs and not use the remote for something else? Um, well, I, the plugs, I think you have to use the remote for the plugs because you, you've got to be able to learn that code. And I don't think that like pressing this side button here, I'm pretty sure that that does not trigger the code to be sent. And so if the code that you need to control this is not flying through the airwaves, home assistant's not gonna be able to learn it. With some, you can learn the code on the plug. Maybe you can. This one, I don't think you can. I, we can look at the instructions and see. But yeah, I, I guess it, it, like on some devices, like on these devices, on these devices, that, that is exactly what you do right? You, you want to learn the RF code for this device. This is one of the leak sensors. Then you, you set this thing to learn and then you just short this, you activate this and it works. I don't know if it works that way for these. Let's look at the instructions right now and see. When all else fails, read the manual. No, it, it's manual on off. Yeah. I kind of thought so with these particular plugs, there may be some others. Plug in appliance, turn on and off with the remote. The remote does use one of those 12 volt batteries. Press and hold the button on the indicator. Let's see, unplug the device from the outlet. Press and hold programming. So this is to reprogram the outlet. Okay, so you can, you can reprogram the outlet so that it will respond to a different button. So I suppose, so I suppose actually there might be a way and the way would be for you to, you could do it with Tasmoda. I don't know how you would do it with Home Assistant. My thought is if you hold down the button to, to reprogram the plug and then you send a, sorry, and then you send a code from uh, the RF bridge on with Tasmoda because it's got those 16 buttons, you can send one of those codes. Maybe that would work, but I don't know needs to send a new code to learn into the plug. Yeah, it would need to send a new code and then have the plug learn it. That's what you're saying, guys, right? So that's the same thing. That's the same thing. More Dr. Pepper Blade says, okay. <laughs> Binary Nexus, you can get, I don't have the Home Assistant one, but I have the Zigbee one. I'll do it again in a couple minutes. You can create your own code and send it to the plug when it's in learning mode. Okay, good. Then you can use the remote for something else. Okay, great. That's a good idea. All right. So now the RF command, this, uh, oh, sorry. I put command RF. That was not going to work. You have to put command type. And then here you're just telling it that it's RF or IR. So that tells the broad link what to listen for. Um, alternative. I don't need this useful for discrete remotes. Code must be stored as alternative. I'm just leaving this. It's not required, I don't think. And timeout has also got a default. So this is all I'm going to use. So the entity ID is what I'm, that's what I'm calling this. And then, um, oh, no, sorry. The entity ID is, sorry. The entity ID is the Broadlink device. And then the device is what I'm calling this RF plugs remote. And then the button, the, the, the command is which button I'm pressing. And then I have to tell it that it's RF type two. Okay. Hi, how's it going, Dawson? What's up? Okay. Just stay off. So just don't play anymore. Okay. Just don't. Hi. Dawson's getting, I think he's getting bullied on Minecraft. So I tell him to not go play anymore. Yeah. Anyways. 
What is that now? There you go. It's posted in on Discord, public to all. What what did you do? Repost your question. Restream missed it. Oh, sorry. There you go. Okay. Anyways. All right. So now we just call this service and then we press the button. So what will happen when I call the service, um, it will, a little notification will pop up and it will tell me to hold the button and then it will go away. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Anonymous. Appreciate you being here. <laughs> Can Home Assistant get the state of the RF plug? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I think you would have to, so getting the codes is one thing and being able to send the codes is one thing. When you set up the entity, because you have to create an entity for that plug if you want to, if you want to see a state, but it would have to just assume because again, these plugs are not sending the state out because if you, if you, You'll have to create the entity if you want to plug um, in Home Assistant. And then it's not going to it's not going to be able to have the state unless it just assumes the state based on whichever you pressed last, right? Most plugs don't have two-way communication. You can handle that in MQTT. Yeah. Rule timer. Home assistant would have to know I'm on Bluetooth input then know the line to press it and there's something. I'm not sure. You have to have some kind of logic and memory. Um, trying to see what you're saying. Like home assistant would have to know. Ah, whoa. That was crazy for a second. Things just went all nutsy. All right. Yeah, Johan just po posted something. Do backlog publish to PR motion rule timer. So you're using Tasmoda or MQTT for that. So 1986, no feedback of state. That's right, guys. That's right. <laughs> okay, you're talking amongst yourselves. No problem. Great. You guys keep doing your thing. I'll keep doing my thing. <laughs> talking about a soundbar. Ooh, I love soundbars. I'm a speakerophile. All right, anyways, let's, let's learn this remote control. So here goes. We're going hit to hit the call service. And the notification is going to pop up. I'm going to hold this button. I heard it click on. Now that goes off. And it comes back on. It tells me to press it again. There it goes. It learned it. Done. Yay. That was easy, right? Isn't that awesome? Am I doing this at Node Red? No. <laughs> are you talking? To, you guys are talking amongst yourselves again. So now that was button number two. Oh, I'm an avocado. Thank you very much, worm. <laughs> So we're just going to keep learning about RFs while I'm, I'm not with my a pear. That's a pear. Is that a pear or an avocado? Let's have a poll. We need a poll to determine if this is a pear or an avocado. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was funny. <laughs> I don't know how you do that. Uh, I think it's a Twitch thing. It's a pear. Pierre says it's a pear. It's a pear. All right. Everybody agrees it's a pear. <laughs> I guess I eat more avocados than pears. It's a papaya. Of course it's a papaya. I tell you, I hate papaya. I hate it. It tastes so nasty. I think that there is a, there is a gene that some people have or something that makes papaya just taste disgusting. It tastes like vomit to me. Hello, Sir Charles. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Anyways, I hate papaya. You ever watch, uh, should we digress? Let's digress for just a second. <laughs> There's a guy that I love watching on YouTube. Um, oh gosh, what's his name? Uh, Ig. Oh man, it's not Ignacio. Oh man, I can't I can't remember his name. But he's the guy that hates the tomatoes, right? He's the guy that's always going, tomatoes are disgusting. <laughs> Anyways, I like him. He's funny. He takes like old patents, especially like Tesla stuff and, and makes it real. It's pretty fun. Anyways, papaya is disgusting. But if you like it, that's cool. You can, you can like papaya. All right. Step two, we need to be able to turn this thing off. So what we had it do before was learn the on command. Now we're going to have it learn the off command, which is a different button on the remote. All I have to change in this setup here is changing where it said on to off. 
and then I just will press the other <laughs> button. Yo, that's twice. Give me a heart attack. Did I see a matrix on your desk? Yes, you did. Actually, I have two of these. It's coming. Do 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 That time wasn't you, yeah. Thanks for new subscribing and new following and for screaming. Let's do this one. We need a bigger one. I have I actually have 16 of these, I think. I have 16 of these. Is that not big enough? <laughs> oh, Binary Nexus wants Oh the Zigbee, that's right. I'm waiting on the controller to arrive though. Bigger! Bigger! <laughs> you wanna see it in the background? I'll put it in the background for sure. We'll hang it up. We'll hang it above my head somehow. Oh wow. We'll figure it out. Okay. So now that we've got this set up for the RF code for off, we're gonna do the process again. This time I will click on the notification so you can read what the notification says. Some of you have already seen me do this before, but for those of you who have not, here it goes again. All right. So we're going to call the service. The notification will pop up and it'll say, press the button. So I press it until it goes off. Okay. It went away and then it comes back and it says, press it again. So I press it again, hold it. Sometimes if you put it down closer, maybe it's a little better. I don't know. It seems to be working okay. And then I have noticed that sometimes I have to off and on it again, but eventually it goes away again. And when it, once it goes away again, it's learned it. That's it. We're done. Pretty cool, huh? So one more time, because there is a third plug on this. So we'll learn the Plug number three on, that's the bottom one, down here. Call service, hold that down, goes away, let go, hold it again. I feel like I click it once, I don't know if, it, and there it goes again. So sometimes I let off and click it again and it seems to maybe be catching it better, but whatever. Anyways, okay, so then off, now we're gonna learn this last one. This is the off for the button number three. This is so slick. Like I am amazed at how well this works now. It was such a pain to do this RF Pro stuff a while back. I'm not gonna take it off and on back again this, this time, see if it does it. Now it looks like it wants me to let go and press it again. Uh oh, it's taking too long. Press it again. No. After I just said how good it was working. Oh, there it goes. Finally learned it. Okay. So that's it. Now, I have learned those controls here. Okay. So this is all learned. Did it, do you think it timed now? I don't think it did. I think it learned it. I think it learned it. Uh, so the next thing we need to do to test it is to send the commands. Okay. So I need to make sure that I remember. <laughs> what I wrote here. So I'm going to copy this because I might forget these. Now we need to do remote send service instead. Okay. So now we're going to have remote send command. There's the entity ID. So the device, we need to paste this in here. Okay. There we go. And we don't need the command type. I don't think we need the command type. I think it should know it when we do this. So let's see, let's turn plug number two on. See if this works. Yep. Gosh, that makes a horrible noise. Turned it on and then we turn it back off. Oh, that's the bridge. The RF bridge makes a horrible noise when it's doing this. <laughs> and then you didn't see this earlier, but I did learn plug number one. I can't remember if I called it this or not. Yeah, I think I called it something else. I changed the name of it. Anyways. Okay, so there it is. Plug number two. Turn it on. Did 
the broad link is like making a ton of noise. Now, how do you make it into an entity? We're going to do that right now, Panda Boy. I don't know why it's making all this noise. There it goes. Turned it off again. Not super, not super responsive. And I don't know why, man, it just makes some, makes some horrible noise. Weird, 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 weird. <laughs> Remembering the names in a PIA. I don't know what that means. The codes are in the dot storage file. Yeah. And I don't think for my blue, I don't think I have the, I don't think I have the, um, I don't think I have that stored. Like I don't have, I didn't install Samba yet to look at it or whatever. Man, that thing is still making noise. Zoinks. I don't know why it's making so much flipping noise. There, it finally stopped. Sheesh. It was seriously making some kind of crazy racket. Getting salty? Do I have salt on here? Why don't I have the salt emote? Oh my gosh. Okay, well, put that on my list of things I need to make. One for salt. Someone have to make a library of the codes? Sounds like my pager. <laughs> Could you hear it? It was it was quiet, but it was definitely making a noise. Yes, they're good enough. You can edit them directly. Yep. Okay, so now we need to make this into an entity. All right. Is there an is there a way to make an entity like this without just typing it directly into like the config.yaml or something. Oh, RF interference with the speakers. That Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. RPyTX. Luis, I, Luis, I don't know about that. Um, that's where you use, is that where you use the, the Raspberry Pi pins? Use the tilde. Use the tilde. So they're just text files. It should be easy enough to commit them. Oh, you mean for the remote codes? Yeah, it'd be interesting to know if the remote codes were all universal. They probably are, right? Like if, but yeah. So I guess you could you could use different ones. Um, how how would be the best way? I'm trying to decide if we just make this a switch. So that would be the kind of entity, right? Let's just see. Let's see if there's something new in how you create entities in Home Assistant because lots of things are newer. Um, Home Assistant developer docs. Oh, that looks bad. And it's blinding. Create your own entity, adding devices. Can I go to devices? You can do a script or a switch. Script scripts from the configuration page, then a Boolean. But you have to do it in the YAML, huh? There's not a user interface way to do it. That's what I was wondering. You do like... Yeah. So there's not like a button down here that says create a new entity or something, right? Or a button down here that says create a new device. So you do have to just make it your own. Surely your dark mode extensions must have some kind of whitelist so you don't have to keep switching it. Well, I don't always have it on. So here's the thing about the dark mode. My home assistant is already in dark mode. So, and I like it better. It changes a little bit when dark mode in the browser is on versus off. And especially node red looks awful when this dark reader is on. Probably there's a setup current site toggle hotkey toggle extension alt shift. So yeah, see site list. Yeah. So this is probably what it is, right? Not inverted site list. So if I actually put this in that list. Is that right? Yeah, 
So now it's not working on that site. Cool. So if I go here, it'll be, I can turn it on. Thank you guys. That's actually really good. Whoever came up with that. I didn't know that that was a thing. So in the site list here, you can add which ones you don't want it to, to do. Sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Thank you. That's awesome. Now I don't have to keep going back and forth. All right. Where was I? Forgive my distractions. Oh, we haven't done this in a while. <laughs> Just copy the YAML from the service into the script YAML. Much easier than a switch in the config file where you need to copy the button code. Oh, well, do I need to copy the button code? I think I can. Let's so let's do it in scripts. I haven't done that. I haven't done that. So we'll, let's try that. Uh, the YAML from the service. So here we'll copy this. Wait, I don't need this. I don't know why that's there. All right, so we're gonna copy this guy and we'll go to scripts. We'll make a script. I haven't done this. So add a script. New script. We're gonna call it RF plug to on. Great. Um, we're gonna do an MDI. Um, I don't know what, uh, I don't know. I love my MDI. I got to go looking at MDI icons. Uh, let's see. Plug, something that looks like a plug. Yeah, power plug. There you go. Ooh, look, it even has these fancy ones. Wow. We're just going to do power dash plug. Okay back here somewhere. Okay. Power dash plug. Yay. I like it. Entity ID. Is that all I need to do? RF power plug on. So is this going to create, this will be scripts dot RF power plug to on, right? Okay. Direct in the button card with the call service. Oh, that's a good way too, guys. Oh, that's probably the best way. That's probably the best way. Um, okay, so what this is doing, this is naming the script. We'll go, we'll finish this part and then we'll go do it guy's way. I like that. I think that's the way to go. All right, so we're making a script. So when the script is activated, what action do we want it to do? We want it to call a service. What service do we want it to call? We want it to call the remote send command service. And the names of the entity to send the command from is the RM pro. And then the service data is this. Do I still need the entity ID down here? Probably, but I definitely need this device name and the command name. And then we're going to save that script and we're going to execute it. And it worked. Yay. Now we're going to do another one where we turn it off. Um, Yeah, that'll work. Yay. That's awesome. And then we're just going to change this down here to off. Oh, this is working so well. So well. Save that script and activate it. Yay. Turned it off. Clap for yourselves, everyone. Clap for yourselves. Nicely done. Nicely done. I'm running out of graphics. I got to make some more. Hey, sweet. Now, so that's one way. So, and that was actually quite easy. That was quite easy. Then what you can do, we got to go here and we got to make a button. Uh, let's just add a card and make it a button card. The entity. Now, can you make the entity from a script? Yeah, it looks like you can. Why is it only script? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I messed up. I didn't finish saving it all. Oh, credola. What I did. <laughs> oh, man. Do you see what I did? Do you see what I did? Took me four hours to work that out today. Oh, no. Shouldn't it be critical hit? Oh, it should totally be a critical hit. I forgot about critical hit. Yeah, love that one. That's my faves. That's my faves. Oh, planes? We'll do planes next. <laughs> I like that. I like that Shark Tamer says the other the other uh, plug icons look like the Mexican wrestlers. Lo, los luchadores. 
Yeah, I did. Exactly right, Shark Tamer. You're exactly right. So what I did was I forgot to change the name of it. Oh, man. So it's called, it's, the script is called on and it should be called off. Okay, let's go back to scripts for a minute before we do this. Let's go back to scripts. Fix that. Knucklehead. So I only have one script. Uh, I need to edit it. And call that off, off, pro off. Oh, is it because of the, well, what, what part? Hmm. So it just overrode the other one? Well, why when I went in there? All right. Well, let's, let's do it again. Dang it. All right. RF plug to on again. Because I messed up. Plug to on to. So the entity ID is what changed. Okay. So that's what we can do. We, well, let's leave this for a second. We need to just change this entity ID. There we go. We should be able to do that here. Yes, there are no, dang it. It's not going to let me change the entity ID. Ah, uh, ooey. Details. I can execute it. Look at the history. Oh God, that's a bummer. This entity does not have a unique ID, therefore its settings cannot be managed in the UI. Is there a duplicate button? Duplicate script, bingo. Now I just need to change the entity ID here. We're going to call it RF plug to off. So this is the real off. So we'll save that because this one is actually telling it to turn off. Now we got to go back to the scripts to the old one and <laughs> change it to on, change this, and change this. There, yeah, there's a million ways to do this, right? Or five or six ways to do this. But now it will at least have the correct entity ID, right? And now I can go back here and I can change this one so it doesn't say duplicate. And I like off in capitals. Oof. Yeah, oof is right. <laughs> okay. Oh, I did that the hard way. Okay. Now, now we have an off and an on. So let's try them again. Let's execute them. Oh, it's already off. Okay. On. Yes. Off. Yes. Okay. Very well. Now back to this. We're going to make a button now on the home assistant front end and we're going to make the script on one button we'll leave the, all that stuff the same and this tap action um i guess i don't want it to toggle do i have to do the whole call service thing i do I have to put all that in there it can't just it can't just uh Call the script. That's a bummer. I guess I can just use like script activate or something. Script reload. Oh, yeah. So we can just type that script. Okay. Call service. Is that going to work? Service can only be entered in the code editor. I wonder if that'll work. I don't know if it'll work or not. Yeah, that works. Yep. Toggle should... Toggle... I don't think toggle will work, T TMC, because it's a script. So a script doesn't really have an off. It just has an on, right? Just has an activate button. So go back in here. 
I'll add another card. And this one will be the other one. Now we could do this, and we'll do this in a different way in just a second too. Oops. Script off. We could try toggle. Let's just see what happens if we do toggle. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Maybe TMC is right. Uh, I've been wrong twice ever that I can think of. Well, I was thought I was wrong once, but I was mistaken. Okay. Is it on? It's on. So let's try this. Yeah. It doesn't work. Yep. Oh. Oh, I see. So if it was off. Yeah. Maybe it's the plug that's making that noise. Yeah, it turned it on. Ah, I like I like doing the other way. I, I think maybe you're right with the toggle, but the call the call service and then the script with that name was pretty simple. I would I would just go with that. Ay 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 mijo. Script off. Let's do that. Okay. So it's on right now. We can turn it off. There you go. Template switch is a good idea. So there's there's lots of different ways to do this. The other thing you could do um, is make a button. I think this is what guys was referring to. Make a button and then I guess I would put it. So you don't have to have an entity. So I would leave the entity blank in this particular case. We'll give it a name and we'll call it RF plug two. Um, and of course we're going to need to do, well, let's do one of these luchadores. Let's call it uh, this guy, EV plug Tesla. <laughs> Cause it looks like a luchador. Okay. MDI, uh, EV plug Tesla. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, okay. And then, oh, so you could have the states. You could have it keep the states. And that's what I'm doing now, P. Cruz, exactly what I'm doing right now. So now I'm going to do call service for a tap. This would be, this is, there's a lot of ways to do it. And you can say, oh, well, this is the way I would do it. Great. Um, and maybe I'm not doing it the right way or the easy way, but this is a way to do it. Call service, script, turn off. I mean, that's something, right? That's something. So if I tap it once, turns it on. If I tap and hold it, it'll turn it off. There it goes. So there's other ways to do it. That's, that's another way. I didn't know that you didn't have to use an entity. It's like a dummy button. Yeah, exactly, Dave. You don't have to make an entity. That's what we're, that's where, uh, you, but you could make an entity. And, and that's what like Kenneth is saying. If you make a, if you make an entity like switch plug two, then you, you do have to put in, you have to put in the codes. Somebody said you do. Guys said you do. I don't know. Um, you could do, you, let's, let's look at, let's look at making it an entity and we'll, we'll go from there. All right. Let's just try making an entity, uh, switch entity. It's been a while since I've done that. I've only ever done it with, um, MQTT value template, turn on. Yeah. So here's the turn on, turn off. Right. And then what I wonder about is, is there an assumed state? Is there an assumed state? Icon template, maybe change the icon based on, but see, that's got to see the state. Star heaven light switch is RF controlled. Kenneth, uh, shoot me in discord what you use. Shoot me your YAML so I don't have to reinvent the wheel here. You don't have to have an entity name, but there is still an entity. How do you make that button smaller? Good question. Um, you can do it, I believe, here. Uh, let's try 
icon height. That made it a little smaller. We can make it quite a bit smaller. I think there's other ways to do it too, but did that make it any smaller? I don't think it did. I don't think that made it any smaller. I think you might have to do that in the YAML. So you have to go here and then do it with like CSS or something like that. Is that right? Prime UFO says, how do you make it smaller? How would you make it smaller, guys? Icon height not, is not the right thing. It's going to be something else. But you'd have to change something here. I don't think it's part of the... I don't think it's part of this. Change the theme. Small positive value. It won't let me... Oh, you mean just like go up like this? Oh, it's so tiny. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Kenneth. Where did you put it in the in the live stream chat or in general or where? Yep, there it is. Okay. Let's see what we got. So this is Kenneth's. We're going to just look at this for a second. So this is what he's got. This is for this is how Kenneth does an RF plug entity. So friendly name there, value template. Whoa. Oh no. Where'd it go? Crap. It disappeared. Because a bunch because it's because this is showing all of the chat. Ah. It just disappeared. Message it to me directly, Kenneth. Try again. I'm so sorry. Um, icon height is okay, but you need to put a positive value. Does it? Uh, well, that probably wouldn't change the width, though, right? Yeah, it's smaller, but that's not going to change the width. You can do it like this. You know, if you put it in a graph box like this, and then I think the way, like the way that I did these. Um, man, my other home system is just so super laggy, so super laggy, maybe because I'm running deep stack next to it. Just set the size. So size is not here. I just need to go to, uh, in here and do it. I just do size. I, I don't know these by heart. Sorry, forgive my ignorance. Size is not supported. You can still edit your config in the YAML. And then what do I put for size? Just guessing here. That probably didn't work. Just guessing. This is what happens when you just guess. Nothing. So that's not right. This is why this is when you want to look at those uh documents, you know, look at the documentation. Wow, there's a lot of stuff in the in the live chat. It's in live stream. Oh. There we go. Make scripts as toggle switch. Oh, Worm's got to make switch as toggles. This is a the Home Assistant community post. So here's something you need to do. Theater mode on, sequence, service, theater off, and then make a fake switch. Okay. Ah, oh, this is all complicated. You got to remember, this. we're talking about this guy. Oh, the Zigbee. All right. Oh, the Zigbee. Can't, don't make it too complicated. Oh, the Zigbee. Oh, the Zigbee. Okay. Oh, Remember who are, who is our audience here? <laughs> the man talks to his socks. We got to keep it simple. <laughs> I love you, Paul. Oh, okay. Mm. 
All right, so back to Kenneth's here. Maybe this won't disappear this time. Okay. Um, so he makes a value template is state on. Service home assistant, turn on. Input Boolean. So created an input Boolean. Man, this is all just, it's all hard. It's not really hard. All hail Paul. You made an input Boolean that holds the on off state. Yeah. I don't think that's going to fly with our, with the, our bald pelvic thruster. Do you? <clears throat> Blueprints or automations only so far. I've yet to find a blueprint worth using. Anyone found one that's great? Oh, good, good. Richard, I haven't looked at him in a while. I was thinking about it as I was struggling through my, um, my uh, iOS notifications thing, that a blueprint would be a really nice way to do that. A blueprint would be a really nice way because I've done those you know, the companion app notifications a, a few times at different stages in home assistant <laughs> development from the beginning till now. And, uh, it's not, it's not an easy process and it would still, I think even as, as much as it's made some changes with the app, especially and how you can do some of it in the app, it's still a process that would definitely hang up a lot of people. So Electronics wants to know how to install Hasio and Docker. I'm not the guy to ask. I wish I could tell you, but I cannot. Hello, Miguel from Portugal. Um, I mean, if we're resorting to using an automation, then maybe a blueprint alongside it. I think a blueprint to create this would be a good way to do it, definitely. But would it, would it work? Would it, could you make a blueprint that would put all this stuff together. I don't know if you can. All right. Sir Goodenough's got a challenge for anyone to write a blueprint for the thing I was trying to do with it. Would not work with cloud text-to-speech. Ooh, what were you trying to do, Sir Goodenough? And Paul wishes he was in Portugal. And Baz is like, I don't know. <laughs> yes, you can't. Oh, can you install Docker on Hass.io? Uh, is there a Docker plugin for Hass.io? Is that what you're saying? I don't know. Let's look at the button card real quick and see how to make it smaller. I'm sure that there's an easy way. It's not the custom button card. I think that might be a little different. Settings, show icon, icon height, theme, tap action, hold action, YAML, configuration variables, Entity name, icon, show name, show icon, show state, icon height, state color, tap action, hold action, double tap, theme. Oh, so there's nothing for size. So you have to be using the custom button card probably to use the size. Or, or if you squish them, maybe if you squish a bunch of them together in like a, in a horizontal stack, would that be it? Shouldn't run your own Docker on it. There you go. Portainer and go. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Lewis. Lewis has been putting in some work. Can I'm, I'm going to plug Lewis's, uh, I don't know when video, but Lewis is making a video. Lewis sent me uh, a very good detailed instructions on how to uh, install Ubuntu as a VM and get it running deep stack to be able to learn some uh, image uh, object recognition for my whole uh, dirty dishes in the sink madness. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's, we're like 90 plus percent of the way there. I think we're, I'm hung up on the last step, but I'm not sure exactly where, but Everything has worked up to this point, and Lewis is going to make a little video about it, right, Lewis? Now you're on the spot. Now you have to make it. <laughs> he put all that work in. I mean, he deserves some serious credit. He deserves 10,000 million views on it. <laughs> um, need to edit the raw square false. Oh, is that what you do, Paul? Now, again, does this work if it is a 
just the home assistant button card versus the custom button card? Is there a difference? And then what? And then if I do, because that wasn't in there. Would it, do you get your RM Pro to be found in Home Assistant? You're struggling. Oh, uh, so Rasby, did you hook it up? Or sorry, you're talking to Nick's. Anyways, um, you do have to set up the RM Pro in their crappy app first, because that's how you get it connected to your network. And then, and then when you set it up in uh, your home assistant integration, you need the um, you need the IP address. Like, oh, that's Hyperion, but you still need the IP address. <laughs> Where'd it go? Um, I don't think it's gonna give me any of the configuration stuff here, but yeah, it's not going to tell me any of the stuff here but here you've got when you when you put it in when you first set it up you have to give it the ip address when it's connected to your router so you do kind of have to check that check that part out it says it can't connect to it so rasby let's see uh so you're you're on the entity part so is it a port thing? Is it a, um, I mean, I don't remember what I did, but it didn't seem to be too tough. I could hook up my RM mini real quick. We could do it again. IP is found in my router, but not in home system. I can't remember. Did it, did it automatically find it? We'll try this. We'll power this guy up and we'll see if we can uh, connect it with the integration. Okay? Just for you, Raspy. Just for you, man. No Raspy left behind. <laughs> Oops. In your video, in my video, it found it automatically? Maybe it did. Which one are you using? I don't know if the regular one is... What have we broke this weekend? I don't know. Lots of things. <laughs> How's it going? <sighs> Shark Tamer says the next thing he's going to do. Okay, great. I actually do think like we're, there was a time where I said that the RM Pro was not very home assistant compatible, especially, excuse me, especially with RF signals, with RF codes. But now it is. I mean, the, the RM Pro, Broadlink RM Pro now is very much a viable home assistant RF and IR bridge option. I mean, it, it if you don't want to hack a Sonoff RF bridge and, with Portish to be able to get all those codes uh, and you need IR, this is the mini and all it does is IR. It doesn't do RF. It looks like it's trying to pair right now. That's a bad sign. I wonder if it's not connected to my router. Let's just see. Let's see if it's connected to the router. Should be. Used to be. This is another one I want to add to my don't. <laughs> Let's see if it can find the mini. Nope. Plus, yeah, you know what? I don't know that the mini, I might need to redo the mini. The mini may have lost its ability to connect to my network. Um, oh, so that means that I don't even have the Broadlink app anymore. I don't know if I can do this right now. Uh, I do still have the Broadlink eControl app. So let's plus 
I'll give you guys some of this rundown. So Broadlink app. So we're going to add a, is it a device or is it a remote? Let's add a device. Enter your Wi-Fi password to configure the device. Still blinking. Okay, putting in my Wi-Fi. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to find this or not. I mean, this thing's blinking like it's ready to set up, but I don't know if it's going to or not. It looks like it's looking for things. I don't know if it's going to work. <laughs> Metal Wolfie. I love it. I love it. Covering your password when it's password one, two, three does not make it any more secure. Uh, and and not having changed it after leaking it 50 times on YouTube also does not make it any more secure. Don't click add device to group in Broadlink app. You can add to home system without, and it'll all be local. As soon as you put the Wi-Fi details, you can delete the app. So this one. Yeah, this is it. Okay. Sort in order. I don't know what that's about. Anyways, it has now found it. but it has not connected it. So I'd like access to your camera. Okay. Oh yeah, this was one that was trying to scan the code and there's no code. Uh, I wanna see the new Broadlink app. Not sure about the old one, oh. Yeah. Oh, well. Um, raspy, I don't know, buddy. I'm not sure I can do this right now. Um, I tried back way back when I tried setting with Broadlink app for the first time. iPhone, it was a nightmare. Well, it still is. <laughs> it's crappy. They have had several. They have had several uh, different apps and they all suck. Only going to be using Broadlink to turn on the Nintendo Switch. Hopefully, it can actually do it. Uh, yeah, the, so the Nintendo Switch, is that IR? Thank you, Justin Z. Yes, it is. Uh, just, uh, by the way, whenever I had an issue with mine, just stopped working with Home Assistant for no reason, and all of a sudden started turning my AV receiver on again. Isn't that funny, Lewis? That's funny. Um, it's too bad that it's not here. It seemed like when it found it, it was because it was connected to my router, possibly. Does anybody have an answer for that? I do not have the answer for that. I can look for a different Broadlink app. Ugh. Ugh. App Store. Rod link. Oh, this app is this app is better. At least it's got better views. It's not the E control. It's just this other broad link. Maybe that's a better app. It's got better reviews. That means everything. Reviews never lie. Antonis, hello, how are you? All right. Um, we're, gonna, we're trying to help Rasby. We're trying to help Rasby. He can't get the integration in Home Assistant to recognize his RM Pro. Give us some more information, Rasby. What, what else can we know about what you've got going on there to see if we can figure out what the problem is? No, do not send me notifications. Would like to find and connect to devices. Okay, yes, we can allow it to do that. Okay, da 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 da. Try now. 
uh, United States. Name. Please make sure the terrorists can see blah, blah, blah. Ugh. 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 I want to know everything about my life. Ugh. Oh my gosh, two-step verification again. Oh, I gotta go to the Google. Golly, this is so horrible. What a pain. What a pain. All this multiple factor authentication, blibbity blobbity. Okay, did that. This is lame. Secrets, secrets. It just doesn't work in home system. The IP address is in my router. I went through the steps like you did and didn't continue the process. I've tried. Did you do, um, when you put in the IP address for the integration, did you do HTTP or HTTPS? That may change things. Photochromax is here. How's it going? By the way, Nick, hello. Did you see your name, Nick? I think uh, you're on the patron list, right? Were you the one asking or somebody was asking why they hadn't seen their name on the Patreon list? Nicholas says, thanks for your good videos. You're welcome. Um, do, 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 do. I'm waiting now for Broadlink to, I don't know what, download my credit card numbers, probably. <laughs> Scarlax, it was you asking. Oh, good. Did you see your name? It's there now. I just did an update. I, you did it how I did it? Hmm. If the remote does not have an LED on it, is it RF? Probably, Paul. Like th an RF remote does not have the little LED on the end, and an infrared remote control is going to have the, that little thing on the end. Anyone want to train me? Your game for what? Okay. Oh, this is the automation I could not make a blueprint out of. The cloud text-to-speech stuff will not work. So there you go. Sir so Goodenough's got a request for blueprint assistance. Didn't catch the beginning of the stream. Glad you updated. Happy to support your channel. Thank you, Nick. Could be Bluetooth remote, depending on what it's for. Could be. True that. This Broadlink thing is still like loading. I don't know that it's going to function. Oh my goodness. I gotta do it again? Oh, nope. Yep. Okay, great. Find an email address. Oh, it's gonna say we already have an email address for you. Okay. What else were we gonna talk about today? We're gonna get into the other stuff here pretty soon. Oh, we're gonna talk about these leak detectors real quick. Oh my gosh. Oh, seriously, this Broadlink app is killing me it's killing me now they're going to email me something that's got a code in it for something blah, 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 blah. good grief although it did say i could skip this step maybe i should just skip it broad link verification code password Uh, come on. Somebody remind me why I'm doing this again. Oh, yeah. A raspy. Well, I want to try it for a few more minutes. Oh, my goodness. Really? They want to know exactly where I am? Good grief. Okay, add a device. Wi-Fi device, smart devices, NFC devices. No, let's try it. Maybe it's a remote. Add a remote. Come on, you flipping thing. Nope, nothing. 
I don't have a QR. It's not a voice assistant. Wi-Fi devices. Remote controls? I don't think so. No. Smart devices. NFC devices. Really, it doesn't give me... Wow, this is crappy. Nope, I'm done. Sorry. I'm out. And it's over. We're done. <laughs> okay. I can't. I can't. Uh, adding this thing through that app was not working. So we're going to just ditch that for now. Raspy, we'll have to work on it. Um, I'll, have to, I'll have to play with it and see if I'm doing it differently. What app was I using? That was the Broadlink app which was not the same app that I used to add these to my network in the past. Let's go to AP mode. Long press reset until the blue light is blinking quickly. Okay, so instead of giving it my, uh, my Wi-Fi information, I just hit AP mode in the old app. This would probably work. Waiting for this light to blink. Light on, light off. I'm doing this one, by the way. Fail on a phone. <laughs> it's not working. There's no button to long press this. It's just power on, power off. And I'm pretty sure it's still not showing up here. Even though it used to show up here. Oh, there's a re there is a reset button there. It's this tiny little thing. Sheesh, I don't even know if I have anything I can stick in there. Anything small enough, I have to get a jumper out here and stick it in there. Someone managed to add a Broadlink light switches. Oh. Okay, we're going to just hold down the reset button on this. There's probably some other reason, no matter what I do, Raspi, there's probably some other reason why it's not going to connect to your network, <laughs> even if I get it connecting. That's crazy. I'm holding down the reset button. It's still not, the button's not flashing. Long press the reset button until the blue light starts to flash. Long pressing reset. No blue light at all. Ah, mm -mm. oh, man. Hit it with a hammer. How has the Wi Fi been now that most of the cameras are off it? Um, I would love to say that it's better. It, it's, I think it's a little better. It's not. Like I had, for some reason the other night, um, my, there it goes. Now I got a blue light. Come on. Holding it. And now the blue light is off. And it's not coming back on. Powering it re with that pressed. Sure. Let me try that. Plug it in. Oh, that's what I should have done. Plug it in. I'm trying to hold this and plug it in. <laughs> uh. No, no light. Oh, lights on, lights off, lights on, off. It's not blinking quickly. So weird. Maybe is it not getting enough power from, I'm just got it plugged into the USB on the computer. Maybe that's not enough. Thought that was one reason to have the Unify, all that mesh stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm not the guy to ask about Unify, to be honest. It's still not my favorite thing. So oh, what I started to say was my UDM just kept going off the, just falling off the network. Like I was, I was at Dawson's basketball game and I'm sitting there, uh, and I just keep getting messages that my um, dream machine is off the network. My dream machine is off the network. Dream machine is off the network. Now, the the internet was still working. Like I could access Home Assistant. I could look at the cameras, but it just kept saying that my dream machine was off the network. <sighs> maybe the dream machine. Maybe I. Maybe the dream machine is not what I should have. I don't know. 
Like, I really don't feel like I'm overworking that thing I, for what it is. It should be fine. I had the same number of devices on my Google Wi-Fi. And the only reason I switched was because I wanted to use like AdGuard. Man, this thing, the light is going on and then off. And then it's not coming back on. Hmm. Sounds like a possible DNS issue. It's always DNS. Seems like it's DNS. <laughs> IP extreme. If I want to sell it, you're the guy. All right. I remove my mesh. All is awesome now. Not unify Asus. No, dude, this thing is not like resetting. All right. Well, we're going to have to move on, Raspy. I'm sorry, buddy. I can't even get this thing to reset. What a lame, junky lame -o. What a lame, junky lame-o. Let's just make sure that there's not a broad link. Wi-Fi to attach to. Nope, there's not. Maybe this thing's dead. Does this thing have like a battery inside of it or something? It's so weird that sometimes I plug it in and no light comes on. And sometimes I plug it in and the light does come on. That, that doesn't bode well. Nope, there's a light on and then off. And then on, and then off, and then it stays off. Junk. Piece of junk. Basura. That's too bad. I really liked this thing. I don't know why it's not working now. Anyways, let's talk about something else. Since we are doing RF stuff, bad cables worn out. I tried a couple cables. Um, it might be the connector on the RM Pro or on the RM Mini. I don't know. I wish I could tell you, man, but it ain't working. Cut the cable so it goes further. <laughs> Four tracks, how you doing, buddy? What we need right now is unicorns. What do I think about the Harmony Hub? I don't know anything about the Harmony Hub, Panda Boy. Sorry, I don't have one. Done, done. It broke. Maybe it's logging in. Maybe it is. Maybe it's trying to phone home. Maybe it's trying to connect to the network. I don't know. But the light is not coming back on. The light used to be on only when it received or sent something. Um, oh, look at that. It's right there. It is connected. This is the RM Mini. It's connected to the network. Lame. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, it just took a minute to connect, I guess. My own impatience. So let's go back to the integration. This is for Raspy. Raspy, this is for you, man. What I wouldn't do for you. All right, we're going to the Broadlink integration right here. And what would system options? I want it to see if it learns another one. So one device. So I guess I right here I need to add another device. I guess let's go back in. Let's go to integrations and just add it a second time. That's probably what we have to do. Let's try add integration. It's probably going to mess it up so it won't work anymore. Broad link. And then host. So this is where I need to put in that IP address, which is 178. And I don't remember if it had to have... Um, HTTPS ahead of it or not. We'll find out in a minute. Thought we were about to get a song there. Oh, yep, there it is. Okay. Well, how's that for not very helpful? How's that for not helpful, Raspy? Because it found mine. Maybe you're, maybe something's wrong. This is where it fails. I'm going to put it down in the basement. Nope, there it is. RM Pro, RM Mini. So basically cut down the cable so it goes further. No need to buy another cable. Oh, I see what you're saying, Lewis. You cut it back and then you splice it back together. 
Can you ping the IC and see if the device is online? Yeah, Lewis has a good, good recommendation there. That's really not very helpful to you, Raspy. I'm sorry. Um, all I've done there is show you that it works for me and not you, which we already knew. <laughs> How's it going, Mr. DIY? Uh, of course it works for me. That's right. Oh, man. That's okay. I don't know how many times. I, if, I had, if I had 10 cents for every time that somebody said, I did it just like you showed on the video and it didn't work, I would be retired. <laughs> let's talk, let's talk, um, leak detectors for a moment. Okay. I want to talk leak detectors for a moment because I have several here and I want to tell you what I think of, of all of them. So I have here, this is three different RF leak detectors. Let me zoom out a little mechanically. So these are three different RF leak detectors. And I was able to learn all of the codes for these on my Broadlink RM Pro yesterday. I won't go through that process. We beat that to death already today. But I was able to learn the codes for all these on my RM Pro. So that's great. Um, I also tested out a couple of Zigbee leak detectors. This one we already knew worked. This is the uh, Aquara one. And I already got this one connected to the blue. This is a Blitzwolf which you can see is quite a bit bigger, but I will also say it was easier to connect to uh, with ZHA. This one, you have to hold this button in the middle and it took a little time and I had to try it a couple times in order for it to connect to my Zigbee hub on the blue here, which by the way is that one that I talked about when I first connected the, the blue. What I did was I've got it on about a two foot extension USB extension. And so it's hanging down in an area that makes it easy for me to get up close to it with these kinds of things. But I actually really liked this Blitzwolf one. Um, you kind of have to, you kind of have to pop it open. It reminds me of like one of them cookies, like a macaroon makes me want to, makes me hungry looking at it. Oh man, it's so slippery. I can't open it. Anyway, the button to the button to uh, configure it is on the inside. There you go. So this is the reset button on the inside. So you have to take the lid off to reset it. Uses the same kind of CR2450 battery, which I think is pretty common for all of these. Um, but that's it. It's, it's pretty simple. I don't remember what it costs, but I like it. I, I like it. This was new. I had not seen the Blitzwolf brand of Zigbee devices, or at least not the leak detector one, but it works and it works with ZHA and with my little hub, whatever that little hub is. We can, I can tell you what that little hub was. I don't remember. It's probably in here. If I look at this, does it show me? No, maybe it doesn't. Yeah, it's this. Uh, USB to, no, this doesn't give me the name of it. Anyways, I, I did, uh, I did that when we set that up on the stream back in December sometime. Anyways, let me tell you what I think about these. So I think of all of these, I think my favorite one is actually this one. This one is the, um, oh man, glasses. It's time for the glasses. The D-I-G-O-O, -O, the D-I-G-O, the D-I-G-O. Sorry, I don't remember what I was showing you on there, but you couldn't see it anyway, so it didn't matter. So this is the Digo, and what do I like about it? Um, I like that it was very easy to program with RF because it has a button here, so you can basically test that it's sending the signal by pressing this button. So I, to do this one, for example, I had to short this to get it to send its signal, and this one was the same. So this one, it, it sent the signal and it learned it really easily. Another thing I like about it is it just uses simple AA batteries. Woo, very springy. So it just uses simple AA batteries, which I liked quite a bit. And then the, uh, the last thing that I liked most about it was how long the cord is on the sensor part of it. Oh my gosh, I can't get that back in there now. Ugh, those are some super springs in there. So this one is really long. It plugs in here and then it's got a little piece of tape on it. You put it wherever. So you stick this so that these things are up against the floor, wherever you want it to monitor. You could screw it if you wanted to, or you could just stick it in. That's great. This one had similar advantages in that it was 
uh, it, it learned the code pretty easily. It did have, I believe it has a double A battery, but I don't remember for sure. Let's pop it open. Let's see. Yeah. This one has the double A battery. So this one has a double A battery. So that's nice. I like that it's a nice, simple battery and it worked well. Uh, the, the length of this are, is not so great. It's a little bit short, right? It's a little short, but it's not the end of the world. It's okay. It can be, it can be still functional. The probes here are monstrous. That's kind of weird, right? The probes here are monstrous, but okay. So this one was good. We'll go back to, uh, I think I bought these from AliExpress. So before we're done here, we'll look at AliExpress at, at my cart when I checked out and we'll see what these cost and everything. I'll give you the links if you want. This one I had high hopes for because it is, it looks just like the Sonoff um, detector, the Sonoff uh, RF door and window detector. And so I figured, oh, it's got the same insides. It does not have the same insides. This has a 12 volt battery, which I don't like because it's uh, harder to get. I just don't have a bunch of these around the house. So if this battery dies, and uh, they're probably more expensive than a double A or a couple of triple A's. And I don't, I, 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 unfortunately I do have some of these on hand because of other sensors that I've had that have used them. So that's not my favorite thing. It also wasn't super easy to get it to send the signal by, by, tripping this thing off. Um, but it did eventually, it, it did eventually send the signal. Now these two, if I recall from my testing and I didn't write it down, but I wish I would have, these two, the codes, uh, got learned just fine in the Sonoff RF bridge that is unhacked, but this one did not. So it did not, this one did not send its code in the same way as the unhacked Sonoff RF bridge could understand. So you basically have to have either the Sonoff RF bridge with Portish or the Broadlink RM Pro. It did, the Broadlink RM Pro could learn it, uh, but it was painful. It was, it was really painful to get this thing because with the Broadlink RM Pro, you have to kind of connect it and hold it and unconnect it and connect it. And so it was, it was painful to get this one learned in the RM Pro. These were much easier. So what is my, what is my overall opinion? I think for, uh, if I want to, have like an actual leak detector that uh, is up against the wall or up against the in, the, in the ground, sorry, up, you know, on a wall like this, like in the basement or in a bathroom, I'd probably go with this one. My project idea initially was something that would tell me about the water level in the um, Christmas tree. And I would use either one of these and I would not use this one necessarily for that. Uh, and then these are both very good for Zigbee. I would not use them. I guess I could, no, I probably couldn't. I was going to say I could probably, you know, use this somehow as well and maybe extend the wires off here. But I think when you do that, you're going to change maybe the impedance and it might not work so well. So I don't know about using these so much for uh, the Christmas tree project, but as far as actual leak detection uh, with Zigbee, they work great. They seem to work just, just fine. Um, and I don't remember what the price is. So let's look at the price. Questions about those things. Can you monitor battery levels of the Zigbee ones? Yes. Of the RF ones? No. Glass of water to trip it might be better. Yeah, probably true. Zigbee or Wi-Fi DIY sensors. What do you suggest? Pros and cons. Uh, for what, Dario? For leak detection? For leak detection? I I'm happy with my RF. I'm kind of happy with the RF, you know? You need those in the kid's bathroom. They seem to think the entire tub is the bathtub. <laughs> the entire room is the bathtub. Yeah. Why RF over Zigbee? I have not had any troubles with RF signals being received reliably. Maybe they would, maybe some people have, depends on your house or some things maybe, but my RF signals have been pretty consistent. Zigbee has been good. But I have had a time or two where a Zigbee sensor will just kind of disappear. Um, and I don't know, maybe the battery died. Maybe, um, I don't know, maybe there was some confusion in the network. I don't know. RF is really just simple because it's, it's like a smoke signal, I guess. It just says, I'm, you know, I'm, hey, there's a leak. Hey, there's a leak. Hey, there's a leak. And then it's up to you on the receiving end to know whether or not it's connected. With Zigbee, you've got to worry a little bit more about it being 
you know, paired with your receiver and that the signal is strong enough and some of those things. So that's, I think they're both great. I mean, I think we're talking about, you know, the difference between uh, an A minus and an A plus or something or an A, an A and an A minus. I don't know. Let's look at, let's look at AliExpress and find these guys here. What do I have in my cart? Do you guys want to see? I don't know. I want to show you what's in my cart. Oh yeah, I can show you that. <laughs> I am buying some upgrades for my uh, 3D printer and I was just trying to decide which ones. I want these extra springs for the 3D printer uh, so that you don't have to balance the, the um, bed so often. And my, my little extruder part here, this little pincher thing is also made out of uh, 3D printing stuff instead of being made out of metal. This one's made out of metal. And then this tube is supposed to be this fancier uh, pet G tube. So it's slicker than the tube that it comes with. So I'll probably go with that one. I was looking at this because at first, all I really wanted was just the springs. But, you know, this is just the springs for two bucks and free shipping. So that was tempting. This is the springs plus the tube, which I want. And then this thing, yeah, it's probably fine to get that thing as well. That's all metal. And for, you know, 11 bucks, 10 bucks total. The difference was I actually looked at Amazon and I think a kit like this on Amazon was only like 14 bucks or something. I'm not sure. The yellow springs are the best. Mark says, yeah, I definitely should get them. DIY MQTT seems most reliable then. Not a random Bluetooth. Make sure it's the Capricorn. Yeah, and that's the other thing. That's the other reason why I'm not sure about this kit because that doesn't say it's a Capricorn tube. So I don't know. I may go with just this and then get the Capricorn tube. And the Capricorn tube hasn't really been that big of a problem. Anyways, let's sign in. Welcome back. I'm already here. Let's look at what I've ordered in the past. Again, I don't want everybody to be, you know, all up in my business. I haven't ordered anything bad, but oh no, it's doing this through. Oh dear. Why is it always doing this to me? It 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 thinks I'm it thinks I'm Dutch. It's always going to the Netherlands. I have to tell it. I do not speak that language. Do you speak of my language? Netherlands, U.S. I am not in the Netherlands. I am in the English. <laughs> so funny. Okay. Sign in. And then AliExpress has now adopted this extra code thing too. So every time I go to AliExpress now, I need to also go to uh, you know, email or whatever and get a second code from them. Ugh. So annoying. Oh, sorry, I did that. Okay. Verification code. Ooh, new $3 Patreon, Richard Campbell. Thank you, buddy. I'll have to update the list. That'll be easy now. I can just go in and add your name real quick. Okay. Now we're going to look at my orders. I think I ordered all these from AliExpress. Oh dear, oh dear. Yeah, it was been a while though. It was back at Christmas time. Oh my goodness. Really? Maybe it wasn't AliExpress. Where did I get them then? Hmm. Could you find a more boring thing to stream about? I don't know. Maybe. No, it doesn't show up as anything in my... Did I buy them from Banggood? Oh, maybe I did. Maybe I got them from Banggood. If I got them from Banggood, I didn't buy them. And they don't always show up in my orders. Thank you very much, Warren. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I did get them from Banggood. And they did show up in my orders. How about that? Okay, so here, let's look at this one. So the did goo one, let's zoom in. We'll open this in a new tab. 
the Diggu one uh, that I like a lot that has the double A batteries that are super springy and it was got a button on the side to learn the code really easy and stuff. That one is only nine bucks. So that one's nine bucks. So that's pretty good. The Aquara leak detector one, oops, I meant to do that in a different tab is, well, I guess it's on sale right now for 15 bucks, but that's Zigbee. So, you know, I'm going to give everybody their own opinion about reliability in Zigbee. I, I certainly feel like it's reliable enough. Uh, so here's the EWE link. So this is Sonoff's motion or Mo Sonoff's uh, leak detector uh, that uses the funky battery. Not my favorite one, 10 bucks. And then there's the, the Blitzwolf Zigbee one, which looks to be a little bit more expensive. And I have not tried the Shelly Floods. Oh, draining the battery in a day. Yikes. So this is the Blitzwolf one, 16 bucks, 17 bucks, right? For the Blitzwolf one. And then the last one. Oh, it looks like I got a temperature, a Blitzwolf ten, temperature and humidity sensor that's on the way from somewhere as well at some point. Oh, I wonder if they're, it looks like these are repeated. And then there's this one, 10 bucks. 10 bucks for this one. So uh, the advantage of this one is it's just one AA battery, but I think the short cord and the big clunky thing on there makes this also not a fave probably second place as far as the RF sensors go. And this, this Digu one wins first place for me. So here you go. Uh, there you go. Says the guy sitting in the Blitzwolf chair. <laughs> well, this was RF. This was the RF one between, I, I was happy with the Blitzwolf one. Uh, I, I, and I wanted to know how their stuff was compared to the Aquara stuff. Um, and it, and it, at least right now, the Aquara one is on sale. So the Aquara one is cheaper right now, but, uh, when it's not on sale, the Blitzwolf one is cheaper. They didn't. Give me special special links for these yet. They probably didn't. I didn't tell them I was going to be talking about these today because I didn't realize that these were ones that they had sent me. <laughs> so yeah, you're going to save a couple bucks bucks on the Blitzwolf, and uh, it was really easy to pair. I was happy with the Blitzwolf. So, anyways, there you go. Oh, it's too many characters. <laughs> The Blitzwolf one is too many characters. So I'm going to have to, I don't have six characters that I can cut off. I will cut off the beginning of it. There you go. Anyways, save a couple of butts. Yep, those butts. Did I say butts? <laughs> That's funny. All right, so we did some RF stuff today. We did some Zigbee, a little bit of Zigbee stuff. I am going to use, uh, I think I'm going to try and use a combination of two of these as a Christmas tree sensor in the future. I really want a smart Christmas tree, uh, sensor. And what I had hacked together with before Christmas this year, didn't really turn out to be as good as I wanted it to do. So, um, next year we'll put together something better and yes, it is time. It's that time when we answer questions in the questions channel, because now the questions channel has new features. There's a lot of questions, so this can take me at least another half an hour, but I'm not, I'm doing good. I'm feeling a little hungry, but other than that, I'm doing fine. Why don't I get a refill on the Dr. Peppa and then we will do the questions. Does that sound good? Oh, look at me. Oh, it's so cold. Oh, it's so cold. I was just about to go fill up my Dr. Pepper, but now that I have this, I'll keep it on. Thank you, worm. Oh, it's so chilly in here. Oh, all right. Pirate as himself asked a question. Thank you, worm. That's fun. Uh, Durs, that's me. Do you know what settings I need to prevent a Tasmoda flash plug to drop off the Wi-Fi? Um, the, the settings that, uh, do I know? No. <laughs> But I know that, um, 
gosh, I don't think that there is a sleep setting on there anymore or that there was even in the past. Uh, when I have had problems, it was power retained stuff, but that wasn't really dropping off the Wi-Fi. I think probably, I mean, can you check the Wi-Fi strength? I would, I would look at the Wi-Fi strength and see if that's something that you need to manage somehow. Um, if you use the Tasmoda integration, which I definitely recommend. So if you're using 9.2, Tasmoda version 9.2 on your devices, and you, uh, you use this, activate some of these disabled entities, you can get this information, enable this entity, and it'll take a minute, but then it will show your um, signal strength. Maybe you need to just, I don't know. I don't know if you can add an antenna, but just to see, is it your signal strength? Because if it is your signal strength, there's nothing in Tasmoda you're going to be able to do to fix that, I don't think. Um, I'm very curious to see what some of you other guys think about, oh, there you go. Stone Obscurity says set option 57 and 56. Let's see what those do, because I do not know what those do. In the meantime, we can look at, did my closet, did it? Did the sensor show up? Not yet. Oh yeah, it is enabled, but it hasn't shown up yet. Yeah, it says it's unavailable still. So, it'll show up in a minute. Um, Let's go to Tasmoda commands. Tasmoda commands. And then we'll look at those, those options. Um, are they all in here? So if we say 56. Okay, here we go. Set option 56, Wi-Fi network scan to select the strongest signal on restart. So you can put more than one in there, right? You can put two different Wi-Fi networks in there. Uh, and if you do that, I guess if you turn on set option 56, it will look at those two signals and pick whichever one is strongest. That's cool. Four tracks has a great idea. Turn it off, turn it back on again. I got a frantic call from my mom uh, a couple of days ago. Well, anyways, and it wasn't exactly a frantic call, but whatever. She was, she got a new phone and we had back, we'd done a backup of her old phone and put everything back on her new phone and it wouldn't finish updating. She's like, all these apps are just sitting here. It's been like a week and no, 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 She's upset. Not a lot, but a little. And, uh, Janice, Mrs. Z's said, why don't you turn it off and turn it back on again? So she did. She turned it off, turned it back on and it worked. <laughs> all right. And then, uh, set option 57, Wi-Fi. Network rescan alternate APs. Oh, so this will, this will switch between whichever one is, uh, more powerful, whichever signal is clearer or stronger while it's running. Is that what that does? That, that seems to me to be, uh, pretty cool. Control F. What does that do? Does that turn it off and turn it back on again? Mike loves the content. Thank you. Got a Sonoff and a Raspberry all set with your awesome videos. I'm the king. Oh, gosh, Mike. Oh, shucks. Oh, shucks. <laughs> Thanks. First rule of the help desk. Plug it in. Pull the plug. Plug it back in. Almost always works. Uh, do I power inject from a power supply? Is that bad? Oh. If I'm using a Dig Uno and I need more than 15 amps. Um, yeah, you can go directly from the power supply. It's not bad. I would suggest putting a fuse on there as well. I'm sure that's what Quindor would tell you as well. Sergey, how's it going? What's up? All right. That was a good question. Let's answer another one. Do I ever pick someone's idea for my node red videos? Oh, you're talking about, <laughs> you're talking about, you're talking about hook up Rob. I don't look anything like him. I think you're talking about Hookup Rob. Um, Hookup Rob was the one who said uh, he wanted to challenge 
viewers of the node red video to give him some crazy automation to try and create in node red. Um, I haven't seen if he's put out another node red video or not. So if he has not, then I assume he's still possibly taking requests for that. Um, all right, let's see. We got somebody that's already question that I answered. It looks like, did I? Well, maybe not. Requ okay. I did not answer. Okay. Sort of on this subject. If you have, this is from Ray. If you have these linked to a button, how do you make a long press send the current state again? I guess I missed what, I guess, I'm sorry, Ray. I can't remember what we were talking about at that point. He said node red. The new Digi Uno is coming soon. <laughs> okay, back to work. See you later, Scott Doc. The RF switch. That was back when you were doing the RF switch button with scripts. So how do you get a long press to send the current state again? So I don't, it doesn't send the state. That's a, a, a downside of these RF plugs is that they, they just don't send the state. So you kind of just have to know is the light on or is the light off? You have to have some other, some other way to know if it's not in the room you're in. Um, and I don't know, I don't know how to tell you what to do about that. Um, if you have like a physical button, this doesn't need a long press, if that's what you meant. This, you can just press the button once. And this will work even without Home Assistant and all that stuff. So this will still work. You just put this off to the side. This works. No big deal. Um, I don't know if that answered the question or not. Sorry. That was a bad, bad answer. So bad. Uh, Shark Tamer. Have to ask. Showed you an awesome looking dot matrix display. I was hoping you'd go over it. Oh, boy. Dot matrix display. Hoping I'd go over it. So you sent that to me, Shark Tamer? I don't remember. I probably looked at it and said, oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Blade, did you, did you, we'll talk about this too. Um, well, I think we talked about this in the past, but um, one of our friends, Wilhelm, passed away for Christmas. He was, um, he did a lot of work with Home Assistant, um, did some of the really good, I um, can't remember if it was integrations or stuff, but I remember chatting with him many times about it. He passed away and he was young and I think he had a family, um, wife and maybe a little kid or something. So um, here is a link to the GoFundMe for him, for his family. Um, sad news, sad news. I have donated. Big, a big chunk, a nice chunk. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. Kiss your kids. Thank you, Blade, for the reminder. Somber. Very somber. Uh, next question. Can you access notifications that come into the sidebar? How can you access them? I want to set up Node Red or automation for knowing when I need to reauth my integration login. Oh. So what you are asking is, can you get some kind of a notification in another place when you get a notification here? Uh, the answer is yes. I'm pretty sure there's a sensor for that, but I don't know exactly how to do it. I haven't done it. Maybe you have to create a sensor. Maybe try in the uh, community store. What do you guys know about that? That was answered? Okay, good. I'll answer. Did you check them? Oh, maybe you could share. Oh, this was from Thanasis. Oh, thank you, Thanasis. Thanasis shared that, yes. It's about to be over and it's really close. Oh, we're only halfway and it's really, and it's about to be over. Oh, man. Well, if you've got some, if you've got something, instead of giving anything to me, give it to him, to his family. The green ones were answered. Okay. Well, there's like a light green too, you know, like a light green. Okay. Who answered the notification question? I don't think anybody did binary. Was that you? I don't, the, the, I think the, the Wilhelm thing was answered. 
but but that's okay. I brought it up anyways. Um, what about the notification thing? Yeah, it's okay. It's perfect. No, it is a perfect system blade. It is a perfect system blade. You're amazing. Release cycle. So that was worth one last share. Yeah. Only for one home assistant release cycle. Definitely, Thanasis. Thank you for the reminder. Sad to see that we're not, we haven't gotten far enough. Sad to see we haven't gotten far enough. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, what I do. What I do, Blade. You want to get my attention on the stream? I know. But it didn't show anything. like the last four digits of some credit card. Yeah. I only remember cause I did that last time. I, 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 I don't remember if it was this or if it was another thing, but if I do the, I was worried about PayPal, but thank you for keeping an eye on me. Uh, all right, let's keep chugging through some questions. The last numbers, but yeah. If Thanos is, if you know his wife or his, uh, family at all, please, uh, um, express our, express our sadness for losing him as well. We mourn with them. Um, okay. Does Oh, this is a good question. Paul, this one's easy. Does the RM4 Pro work with RF? Yes, I'm nearly positive that the Broadlink RM Pro 4 is both this new one. I am pretty sure it's both. Yeah, IR, RF, remote. Yep. Yep, yep. This one is just IR, the little one. This one is just a new shape. Maybe they put some new chips in there. Who knows? Mine's a different shape. Mine's a triangle. Um, you know, it's 40 bucks. It's more expensive than buying a Sonoff RF bridge and hacking it. But it's not that expensive and it and it works pretty well so thank you thanasis okay have i had issues oh let's see um tony asks does anybody know a wall panel app for home assistant that will work with an and with android 4.2.2 just resurrected an old tablet i'd like to use as a home assistant interface you can always do um, Tony, can it just handle a web interface? I mean, can it just you? Can you use? I don't know if you can use um fully kiosk, but maybe you can just use the um browser, whatever browser it has, and just point it to Home Assistant with a specific page. I've been, I was thinking about how you know some of our, like I've got the um the H A. HA switch plates, you know, in, in a couple places. And we're starting to collect more and more of these old phones and iPods and such. And I thought, well, wouldn't that just be a really easy, you know, thing to do to just make an, just use an old phone with the app and don't let it go to sleep and all that. You know, you could set some of those things up. Like, why don't I do that? And then I can have a nice little home assistant dashboard just with a, any old little tablet. So Anything, any browser should be able to work with a Lovelace. And then you just, in Lovelace, you just make a specific view for your, you know, specific dashboard view um, 
for that device. So I've got this one here, which is going to have some funny things on it right now, but this is sort of my phone dashboard. And it looks like my sync camera is offline. Anyways, so that's the sync because I was playing with it. I wanted to see what it looked like. So I put it on this dashboard so I could see it. So that should work. I don't know if that helps or not. I'm getting tired. I need Dr. Pepper and a couple of nuts and I'll be better. Chocolate covered almonds and Dr. Pepper is as good as a nap, right? Although I may go take a nap after this anyways, before dinner. Oh, gotta play this. We're getting there. It's almost full. It's almost full. I'm feeling better already. Feeling better already. Woo! 63,000 nuts, huh? <laughs> All right. Back to it. How do you know? This is from Flix, my switch. DRF, how do you know they are working? Only because it's right here where I'm sitting. <laughs> That's how I knew. Have I ever tried to use a Sonoff Mini connected to two nails in the switch with the switch terminals? No, I have not, Photochromax. But I think it's a great idea. <laughs> um... So enough mini behind a light switch, better option for a retrofit. Yeah, I did that. Um, I think though, if you're going to go behind the switch, uh, good options are Shelly or honestly, I haven't been promoting them much because I don't have very many, but the Onofre, I need to, um, Crazy Bruno and his B8 no freeze. I did a couple of videos about these too. These. And I like them a lot. I don't know why this one's... Why is that one 18 and this one's 34? Yikes. Anyways, I like this because it's got all the pins available so you can add sensors really easily. And it's got two small relays, so they're not as high current relays. Circuitry is pretty simple. You can build these yourself, um, but he also builds them and sells them. So I think these are a good option for DIY retrofit behind the, behind the switch thing. Or Shelly, I would say, so for me, it would be Onofre, like if I was doing my house, I'd use Onofre. Or Shelly as second. I think I'd go Shelly second. But oh no, freeze aren't, you know, the, the other nice thing about the Shelly's is at this point, I think they're all, um, what do you call it? UL listed. So I think the, the Shelly's are all UL listed. Oh no, freeze. I think he's got the uh, European certification stuff in the works. I don't know if it's done yet. He certainly doesn't have the UL listing for the US. So, uh, Thiesk, I have not sorted out my Dream Machine Pro problems. Oh, the Dream Machine Pro, I don't have the Pro. But, anyways. Yeah, well, let's figure out a, let's figure out a way to spin some of those nuts. Is there good enough? Let's figure out a way. I only have one more question to answer. Oh, and I just did. Woohoo! We cleared out the questions. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. We also cleared out the viewers. <laughs> with, all my, with all my goofing around, lollygagging and such. So there you go. May tricks, may tricks. Yeah. Oh, we can, we'll, we'll spend them on this. I like it. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, that's all I got for today, boys and girls. 
Um, that was a good time. Paul Hibbert, that was for you. We got your uh, RF plugs and home assistant working pretty well, I got to say. Um, I don't know how easy they are in whatever you're using. I know I think you were using them with uh, She Who Shall Not Be Named and such, but anyways, we got it working. Shark Tamer says, what's the matrix? Um, removing the Sonoff Mini case and replacing with insulation tape would save some space. I've done that. <laughs> um, so what's the matrix? So what we want to do is have a matrix, a matrix that's back there somewhere that uh, has messages on it. We want to make it so you can put messages on it. He th he still thinks we're nerds. He's king of the nerds. What's he talking about? Yes, that is the matrix. Uh, this is the matrix project we just or something had like the it. Most amazing family vacation. Runner, 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 runner. So basically he's got this thing set up and when you could, you know, he's got this code here and he clips this little thing in there and then you can do telegram to send messages to the matrix. So that's what we're doing. What do you think? They are RF and IR devices are dumb devices. Yes, they are very dumb. Did I talk about security stuff with home assistant? Uh, you mean like the, that you should be updated to the latest version. We didn't say much about it today. Um, but yes, there is, there has been this, some issues with some of the, um, I think it was with some of the community store stuff. Some of the community store custom integrations have had some issues with security. And so updating to the latest version of home assistant is the thing to do to protect yourself. Yeah. See? <laughs> okay. Let's call it the kids. That was a good time. Anything else, boys and girls, before we sign off? I changed my the voice from being Russian to just being It and hashtag thirty nine. F time for final. It and hashtag nine. F time for final. You don't up it didn't update anymore? Uh oh. Here they come, here they come. They come crashing through. Hi. You're tired. Are we gonna we're gonna take a nap before we do uh Harry Potter? No, we're doing it right after dinner. No! What time's dinner? Five. Well, we're doing Harry Potter movie number four tonight. That's right. Oh, mwah. All right, how do you want to sign off today? We did that last time. We did Hermione. Like sign off like we missed like Jackson. Dogs. No, let's do it like Hagrid. Did we already do that? Dogs. Like, like dogs? dogs? No, let's do it like, um... I saw dogs out there, so we're doing dogs. Okay, like a dog. Ready? Round three, please. Round two, watch him. Round two, watch time. Round two, watch Have a good, have a good Sunday, everybody. We'll see you next week. I will be working on Sunday all day. It's Super Bowl Sunday too, so we'll probably stream Saturday morning, maybe Saturday or Monday. Wait, you won't be here next week to watch the fish movie. No, well, no, you're not watching the fish movie without me. Bye.